I think, you know, we, we're at a time where there is confusion because we don't really know what the future looks like when it comes to AI. And for parents of children, there is also quite a lot of fear that their kids are going to be sort of, their brains are going to get outsourced and that everything will be done by ChatGPT. And I can see my kids using AI as already in their homework. So paint the picture of how you envisage AI as an enabler in education and try and do it in a way that is kind of as graphic as possible. What a classroom is going to look like in 10 years time. Yeah, well, well first of all, those those fears are, are, are real. They're legitimate fears. Um, and what I always like to do before I, I go into like, oh, what's going to happen with the technology? Just think about like, what, what was, what were some of the goals of writing in the first place um, and reading? Um, and then also what was the state of what was going on in schools even before AI came on the scene? And I think if you talk to an English teacher, most humanities teachers say, well, it's important to be able to communicate, structure your thought. And I think when you break it out like that, you can start to think of ways to not only address some of the fears with AIs, but maybe even do it better than you did before. So the example I'll give is one where I actually won't talk about technology at all. Imagine if your child's school district just discovered a billion dollars and they decided to hire some amazing, amazing uh, uh, graduate students to hang out in the classroom. And so every classroom is gonna get four or five of these graduate students. And these graduate students are gonna be on call for your teacher, for your the teacher of the classroom to help grade papers, to help bounce ideas, think of really creative lesson plans. Um, and then when class starts, the and, and the class is now gonna be much more interactive. It's not just going to be a teacher lecturing to the students. Those three, four, five grad students along with the teacher are going to be able to walk around, help your children, when they need it, they don't have to wait for that help. But then report back to the teacher. Hey, I noticed, uh, you know, I noticed Caddy is 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 not as engaged as she was yesterday. Or look, Sal's really engaged today. Um, why don't you go praise him on uh, this thing that he did last night? You might have not noticed. Or did you know that he's really into baseball? Let's 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 make the next example about that just for Sal. And. Uh, then they're able to distill all of that and communicate to the parents. So it's not even once a term, it's almost real time. And then they're also able to use all that information and like a professor would have at a large lecture hall, uh, a large university, they get together after class, the, the, the teaching assistants and the teachers say, okay, let's come up with even a better lesson for tomorrow. And let's make sure that we engage Samantha and Caddy is, you know, we address that thing, that issues that she's had. And you know, maybe I'm going to go spend a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time with her and unlock her. I think something's going on at home. I think that would be everyone's dream. The students would love it. The teachers would love it. And parents would love it. And that's essentially what's going to happen with AI. It's obviously, it's not going to be uh, human TAs. It's going to be uh, artificial intelligences that are assisting the teachers that are able to be in the classroom, even observe the classroom and intervene while keeping the teacher in the loop. That, I mean, it's interesting that you say that because we are, you know, we're at a stage where, oh God, I've listened to enough podcasts and read enough articles on kind of the, either the human race is going to be extinct or, we, you know, there's going to be a sort of arms race amongst super intelligence that's going to destroy the planet. And maybe I'm feeling a little dystopian about this. But we are talking about a world where AI takes over the roles of doctors and potentially nursing, but particularly doctors. So why, why will a teacher's role in a classroom be protected, still more valuable, still something that we would seek to retain in a world where AI can do almost everything better? I think we're in a world where we're going to be able to create a much, we're going to be able to raise the floor for sure. And just, you know, your doctor example, and even if we talk about an education example, yes, we should be able to create a much better, let's call it high scale, low cost, automated safety net for the world. If you're in a rural village in India, you'll hopefully get an AI doctor that you that maybe can even help prescribe medicines and things like that. It won't be as good as the doctors you or I might be able to go to, but it'll be a lot better than what they had before. And similarly, your children or even you might be able to get access to an AI tutor, AI assessments, ways to prove that what you know. The reason why I don't think that is the end all and be all, it's it's honestly the, re, the, the, the main reason why a lot of parents, including myself, feel the need to send their kids to a physical school with other kids and with a, a, a social environment, et cetera. What happens in school, we often focus a lot on just the standards. Can, can kids factor a polynomial? Can they grammatically correct a sentence? Those skills matter, but to some degree, the more important skills are is can you deal with conflict? Can you 
uh, be held accountable? Can you communicate? Can you know how to navigate social pressures? Um, and I think those things are going to be even more important. And I think teachers, as the human being in the room, are going to be super important actors. One, just as a physical human being to hold students accountable, but also just to be able to unlock that person-to-person -person connection. And so I think what I tell everyone is the skills that you're going to need in this AI future, yes, you should be able to use these tools, put things together, be entrepreneurial in how you put these tools together, but also the human element, the ability to form connections, to navigate social um, difficult uh, situations, the ability to communicate. I think these are going to become even more valuable. And that's, that's what I think teachers can do. And that's what they actually can be the best at. Is it possible then that we're going to have a generation of kids or multiple generations of kids going forwards who don't suffer from thinking, oh God, you know, I don't want to go to school or maths is boring or English literature is boring, that actually inherently because the tools will be so much better, we will unlock in all students that kind of joy of learning we talk about, but let's be honest, most of us don't really feel when we're in middle school. I think we'll do much, much better than we have at the past. I think the reason why most students disengage is things are going over their head or it's not really connecting to their experiences in life. And this will get us a much better chance of personalizing to those students. When you interact with content, you're much more likely to learn and remember the content. So, uh, you know, we have activities on Conmigo where you can talk to AI simulations of historical figures, literary characters. We have teachers who said, okay, we're about to do the Civil War. We have a special guest, AI simulation of Abraham Lincoln. And I'm going to assign you, you have to figure out by interviewing AI Lincoln, you know, how he thinks things could have gone differently or what he thought had he lived, how things might have been different. Um, that br literally brings history to life in ways that, that we couldn't have imagined before. And to your question about five, 10 years in the future, and this sounds very Star Trek-y, but I also imagine augmented reality, you know, virtual reality glasses, those are probably going to become mainstream in about 10 years, where it literally would be like a magic school bus ride, where the teacher, Mrs. Frizzle, is going to be able to take the class into the circulatory system, or we're going to be able to go to ancient Rome together and try to um, stop or maybe help with the assassination of Julius Caesar. <laughs> whatever, whatever it might be, it will literally make things come alive. And, I and you know, a lot of things will be more game-based, etc. So I think that will... Uh, be a much, much richer way to learn. You know, before in a business class, a teacher, might, a professor might have said, I want you to write a business plan. Now students can go spend probably half an hour with chat GPT and get a pretty good draft of a business plan. But now the professor says, no, I want you to incorporate and at least try to start the business, <laughs> you know, the business plan. And that's actually going to be a very powerful tool. That's the type of skill that we want students to have. If, if, if I hired someone in our philanthropy team at Khan Academy and we asked them to write a uh, proposal to a funder and they did it the old way now, we'd say, hey, you got to get more productive. You should go to chat GPT and get that first draft. Now, if they just went to for, for chat GPT and got that first draft, we'd also be disappointed because we're like, this is a lame first draft. You have to know how to write well enough to be able to now tweak it and edit it to truly be, be a compelling proposal to that funder. So I, I, I think there's ways to get the best of both worlds. So this, that's a really good example, Sal. Elaborate on that a bit for me. Um, take that case and use it to uh, make the case for AI expanding humans' educational knowledge, whether it's in, in creativity or in you know, uh, making a better business proposal, as you've just laid out. It's that it could actually enhance our ability to to not learn for learning's sake, but the, but the result that it could, in, it, it could make us more, as humans, more creative. Is that, is that how you see this? Yeah, I, I think it will amplify whatever your intent already is. You know, I always joke that, you know, money amplifies taste. I think AI will amplify um, whatever your intent is. And so there are people who are just trying to do things as quickly as possible and cut corners, and they will find ways to do that with AI. Now, those people usually aren't the highest performers, and when you amplify that with AI, they still won't be the highest performers in, say, the workplace or even academically. Those that are looking to do something novel and do something creative, I think it will amplify that as well. Uh, you know, I, I have a commencement address I have to give in a couple of days, and I am using AI not to write the address, 
but I wrote down all my raw thoughts, or I, 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 I um, just dictated all my thoughts onto my phone. Then an AI transcribed it. Then I had it. Um, then I, I started tweaking it. And then I've gone paragraph by paragraph, and I was like, is there another way of saying this? Or are there other ideas here that could be that I could bring into this? And the AI. You know, not, I'm not using 99% of what the AI might suggest, but just having that partner there um, is very, very powerful. I'm, I'm also bouncing ideas off of my 16-year-old son and my wife. They're not always around. <laughs> they don't have all the time. You know, I feel like, like imagine you're, you're imagine I'm thinking of someone who gives great speeches, uh, Barack Obama. Um, he, as president, he did have an army of speechwriters, but I believe that he also came to the table with his own point of view. So he was able to, one, prompt those speechwriters so it would be in his voice, but also edit it himself so that it would truly be authentic to himself and give his ideas. And I think these technologies now give us all uh, the power of a, of a President Obama had. Uh, but if you don't write well, if you don't communicate well, it's going to have diminishing returns. Thank you, Sal. That was a very good pitch. Um... I like that vision of learning. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Katie.